Clarence Thomas once said, good manners will open doors that the best education cannot. Dining and social etiquette are guidelines for behavior designed to make others feel comfortable and to show respect for the occasion and the people around you. Etiquette helps people feel more confident because they are set guidelines on how to interact and behave. In interview settings, dining situations can be a test of your social skills. One of the reasons employers take job candidates out to lunch is to evaluate social skills and see if a person can handle themselves gracefully under pressure. Lunch or dinner meetings are also a great way for employers to see if you have what it takes to not only work for their company, but represent them in front of clients. Manners do matter. This video will help you quickly prepare for a situation in which you will need to use dining etiquette. We are going to talk about the key components of an etiquette event and follow the timeline that you might encounter. Please recognize that this video is designed to be brief, so there will be things that we don't talk about. However, reviewing this content ahead of an event or dinner interview should help you feel confident and prepared. The first step to a formal event is to respond to an invitation. RSVP, or respond si vous play, is a French term that means respond if you please, or the favor of a reply is requested. If a response to the invitation is requested, it's because there is a component of the event that requires a headcount. Be prompt in your response. If the invita invitation is addressed just to you, don't assume that you can bring a guest. It's considered in poor taste to bring a guest if a plus one is not explicitly included in the invitation. When you respond to the event would also be a good time to notify the organizer of any food allergies you have if it's an event that has a fixed menu, such as a wedding. If you commit to attending, make every effort to be there. If you can no longer attend, let the host know. When preparing for the event, you want to consider as many details as possible. Some relevant information would be the dress code, the location of the venue, and travel time. Find out the dress code and plan your attire accordingly. If it's an interview, you can prepare by researching the company ahead of time through Google or the company's social media pages. You might also look up the restaurant or venue if you're completely unsure. It's also okay to ask the organizer. If it is an interview though, assume business casual at the very least. Ahead of the event, make sure you know where the venue is and what to wear. Figure out how long it will take to get to your destination and what your parking options are. Plan to be in the parking lot earlier than you think you need to be. Traffic and construction might cause your trip to take longer, so you'll want to account for that. The host of the event should be a few minutes early to greet guests, while guests should be on time. One of the most intimidating parts of a formal dinner is being confident in what to do with all the pieces on the table. This next section will prepare you for this part of the dinner. The diagram on this slide helps identify each item that you may encounter. From left to right, you have your salad fork, dining fork, butter plate and butter knife, dinner plate, salad plate, napkin, dessert spoon, knife, spoon, water glass, tea glass, coffee cup, and saucer. If sugar, cream, or other accompaniments to meals are served with paper wrappers, the wrappers should be crumpled up tightly and either tucked under the rim of your plate or placed on the edge of the saucer or butter plate. Work your way from the outside in. The first courses will use the outer silverware. Here are some mnemonic devices to help you remember what goes where. Make an OK signal with your hands. Your left hand forms a B. Your left side is bread. Your right hand forms a D. Your right side is drinks. Remember that BMW stands for bread, meal, water, which reflects the order of what you see in front of you. And finally, 
Fork and left are four letter words, so forks are on the left. Spoon, knife, and right are five letter words, so spoon and knife are on the right. This can be helpful if your silverware is wrapped up in a napkin and you need to set it out yourself. There are two main styles of eating, and the next few slides will give you a breakdown of what these look like. The American style is primarily used by Americans and Canadians. It's also sometimes known as the zigzag method. While cutting your food, the knife is held in your dominant hand and the fork in the other hand, as in figure one. If you are left-handed, you will hold your utensils in the opposite hand. After the food has been cut, the knife is placed near the top of the plate, blade facing in. The fork is then switched to the right hand and used to pick up the piece of food, tines up. You can see this portrayed in figure two. When you pause during eating but have not yet finished, the utensils are placed in the resting position with the knife placed on the top right side of the plate, blade in, and the fork placed in the four o'clock position, tines up as seen in figure three. This alerts your waiter that you are not finished. Once you are finished, you will put both your fork and knife at the four o'clock position as indicated in figure four. The continental style is thought to be a more graceful way of eating, but it does take practice. The main difference comes when you raise your food to your mouth. Figure one and figure two show you how you will be holding the fork and knife as you cut your food. After you are finished cutting, your fork will remain in your left hand or your non-dominant hand. Spear your food with a fork and convey it to your mouth while the tines remain down. In the resting position for the continental style, the knife and fork are crossed in the center of the plate with the fork tines pointed down, as we see in figure three. The I am finished position is the same as the American style with one exception. The tines of the fork are pointed down rather than up. Although the continental style is a bit trickier to master, it is more commonly used in international settings. If you are at an event where the menu is predetermined, there are not as many what ifs to think through. However, if you are ordering from a menu at a restaurant, follow the host's lead. You might ask them for recommendations or what they're getting to allow them to indirectly set the price point of what you order. If they order an appetizer or dessert, that's usually a sign that it's okay for you to do the same. The exception to this rule would be alcohol. Never consume alcohol during an interview as it will impair your cognitive functions. Focus on the conversation rather than the food. If you're someone who gets hangry, consider eating a snack beforehand so that you're able to focus on the people rather than your plate. For this same reason, it's considered impolite to ask for a to-go box unless the host offers you one. Anything that is difficult or messy to eat, such as spaghetti, pizza, or barbecue, should be avoided. Before leaving the event, express your gratitude to the host. Afterwards, send a note as well. These days, a virtual thank you note will be well received although a handwritten note definitely stands out. People know how much time it takes to sit down, write, and mail a document, and taking that extra effort will impress them more than you know. In general, be thoughtful, be thankful, and most importantly, be genuine. Think about what you'd say out loud to thank the person you're writing to, then translate those words onto paper, aiming for about four sentences. Depending on what you're saying thanks for, each type of thank you note can take a slightly different message. In the case of a dinner, it would be appropriate to mention something that was discussed during the meal. There are numerous options to close the note, sincerely, warmly, best regards, and more. And nothing is right or wrong. Simply use what you feel comfortable with based on your relationship with the person. If you're not sure, both warmly and all the best portray affection, but without awkwardness. 
This video covered the surface on some of the key points to remember when approaching a dinner interview or situation where you might need to use etiquette. However, there's a lot of nuanced, nuanced information that was not covered in this video. For more information on this topic, check our events page to find out more about the etiquette events the UCC will offer. And remember, the best way to be confident in any situation is to practice. If you have any questions, you're welcome to email me at ashley, A-S-H-L-E-Y dot penner, P-E-N-N-E-R, at ttu.edu, or give the UCC a call at 806-742-2210.